What's going on guys? Welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Bungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always, right here on Red Carpet, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, in sports, in film and fashion from around the world. And we start with the sad and unexpected news of actor Chadwick Boseman's death at the age of 43 following a four-year battle with colon cancer. Best known for his role as Marvel superhero Black Panther, the star continued to shine through a number of films over the last four years despite dealing with countless chemotherapy treatments and surgeries. Bosman played many iconic African-American roles from Jackie Robinson to Thurgood Marshall. Graduating from Howard University in Washington, D.C. in 2000, he returned to his alma mater 18 years later for a powerful commencement speech, and our Rodia Adams was there. Your own unique difficulties with the heel. For some of you, the challenge was actually academic. What kind of king you are going to be? Black Panther had an impact on a generation eager to see the first African lead superhero in a Hollywood movie that broke box office sales in the United States and around the world. VOA visited an AMC movie theater to hear how black Washingtonians felt about the powerful film. The main positive impact is that younger people get to see a superhero that looks like them. If you grew up in a time of Superman and Batman and all these Caucasian superheroes, well, it's pretty nice to have an uh, African hero or hero of color that you can aspire to. The star of the movie, Mr. Bozeman, was a student at Howard University. And for many years, I was an administrator, vice president at Howard University. And I felt a special kinship. I wanted to see one of our products in action. The reaction to the movie on the part of the Howard University community was tremendous. Mr. Bozeman was honored at the university at the last commencement with the presentation of an honorary doctorate degree for his contribution to the world of theater arts. So we're in there all the way. Our own RM show host, Roger Muntu, reflects on meeting with Chadwick Bozeman. I am... Um, first met uh, Chadwick Boseman at Howard University through a friend of mine, Jules, a few years later when he uh, was already getting big and, 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 and uh, had a few projects under his belt, uh, I was sent to uh, uh, LA, to um, uh, California and Hollywood to cover the Oscars uh, for VOA. And that's that was the second time that uh, uh, met with him because as I was going then I was trying to find out how, who I'm going to interview who am I going to meet a friend of mine Jules um, told me that, you know my friend Jules told me say Roger you're going to California you know uh, Chadwick Boseman is there now so maybe you can interview him because he already has a few projects uh, so uh, when I got there and, and uh, called him up and we met at Sunset Boulevard in, in, in LA uh, in, in Hollywood I remember one thing that stays in my mind today is is that I uh, asked him, I say, Chadwick, what are you working on right now? At least maybe you can tell me that. He told me, jokingly, he said that, Roger, if I tell you what I'm working on right now, I'm going to have to shoot you. <laughs> that was just his way of playing. But, well, we just laugh. At that time, I didn't realize what it was until a few years back when Black Panther came out. That's when I was like, wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. I personally came to appreciate him even more. Uh, first of all, he was always down to earth, you know, really uh, easily uh, to get in contact with. And then and he wasn't thinking of himself as uh, of this big Hollywood and superstar, or whatever. But, uh, but the, on top of that, to be able to keep something uh, inside, something as that magnitude, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, um, some people, some filmmakers, if they're working on a big project, they'll probably be eager to tell you about what they're working on. But he was able to just say, no, you, you will see when it comes on the screen. So that's uh, a good um, memory of him. Many people around the world continue to grieve and commemorate the late star's extraordinary talent and contributions to film, including filmmaker Patrick Wanjohi. 
I'd say he's a symbol of a positive African story. Chadwick accepted a role of T'Challa uh, on Black Panther, which changed the narrative that African stories are always negative. Grace Kahari, director of Insignia Production, reflects on his most iconic role and impact he made on so many lives. We were so proud to have this superhero come out that represents us as black people. And you're like, oh, wow, all of a sudden everybody is happy and, you know, embracing their Africanness and embracing their blackness. And I don't think that any other actor would have been able to, to embrace that role apart from Chadwick Boseman. The passing of Boseman, who died at his home in the Los Angeles area with his wife and family by his side, was met with shock and disbelief. Black Panther co-star Michael B. Jordan posted a tribute on Instagram saying, I wish we had more time. One of the last times we spoke, you said we were forever linked. And now the truth of that means more to me than ever. Marvel Studios tweeted, his legacy will live on forever. While the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences posted that Bozeman brought strength and light to the screen every time. Singer John Legend tweeted, I'm so shocked and heartbroken about Chadwick. He was such a bright light, such a gifted performer. He brought grace, elegance and power to everything he did. He always seemed to carry our ancestors with him, and now he joins them far too soon. Black Panther director Ryan Coogler released an emotional tribute, adding, it is with a heavy heart and a sense of deep gratitude to have ever been in his presence that I have to reckon with the fact that Chad is an ancestor now. Star athletes also paid tribute to the late actor, from basketball star LeBron James to Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton. After clinching the record-extending 93rd pole position of his distinguished career, Lewis Hamilton stood proudly on top of his all-black Mercedes and crossed his arms for the Wakanda Forever salute, in memory of a hero of his own. And some of Chadwick's fans in South Africa also reacted to the news. You know, we don't find a lot of black uh, superheroes, so meaning kids growing up, you know, they will have a superhero. And that's, I think, the part that he's always uh, played here in, in the Marvel uh, kind of studio movies. You know what, I, I've always liked the idea of Black Panther. Um, I like the cartoon, I like the movie. Um, and I think what he was able to do is give Africanness not just a face, but the energy um, that goes with who we are. We have an incredible continent, we have really interesting people, and we're quite creative as, as, as Africans. And um, what I think is it's just really sad he died, um, you know, at such a young age, but he's, he's played his part. And um, I wish I could have as much impact on the world as, as he has. I'm a big fan of Marvel. Superheroes, and I've seen the Instagram post already, and I've seen how much impact he has done on the youth. He's an inspiration to our kids as well as the youth. We look, we used to look up to him, and we still do. And his name will live on forever. And in Chadwick's case, I think we saw it quite clearly. I mean, he's his run with the with the Marvel Studios as Black Panther is uh, is something that's undeniable in as far as what it did to shine a light on on black culture and, and the diaspora as a whole pretty much responded to that and, 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 was, and was warm to, to, towards his work and, and that'll be greatly missed, you know? Rest in peace and power to a superhero on and off screen. And let's go to the 2020 MTV Video Music Awards, a night highlighting music and pop culture that included heartfelt words in memory of Chadwick Boseman, along with a focus on coronavirus and social unrest. Here are some of the highlights from the night. Host Kiki Palmer told viewers the event was dedicated to the Black Panther icon. We dedicate tonight's show to a man whose spirit touched so many. He's a true hero, not just on screen, Palmer said. His impact lives forever. 
The show was originally meant to be held at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, but plans changed due to the coronavirus pandemic. Some of the performances were pre-taped, while others aired live across various stages in New York City. With a trendy mask as her accessory, and also reflecting the current state of the world, Lady Gaga performed a medley of her songs and picked up several Moon Men trophies, including Artist of the Year. Gaga was joined by Ariana Grande and background dancers, all wearing masks, as they performed Rain On Me, marking the first time the number one song has been performed on TV. The weekend took home Best R&B for Blinding Lights and took time to pay tribute to Jacob Blake, a young black man shot by police in Wisconsin, and Breonna Taylor, the Kentucky woman shot dead during a police raid. It's really hard for me to celebrate right now and enjoy this moment, so I'm just going to say justice for Jacob Blake and justice for Breonna Taylor, he said. Other winners included Taylor Swift, who won Best Direction for The Man, and Colombian singer Maluma, who won Best Latin Moments after he performed from Brooklyn. And let's go to East Africa in Kenya, where job losses in the country that resulted from the COVID-19 lockdown have also hurt Kenyan artists who are trying to find different ways to promote their craft and make a living. Now, some are using their art to spread health messages about the coronavirus, as Lenny Ruvaga reports from Nairobi. Artist Patrick Mukabi teaching an online art class. It's a unique experience for the master artist who turned to virtual teaching at the onset of the COVID pandemic. But the platform has definite drawbacks, he says. I like being with people. I get ideas from people. Uh, not meeting my students. Huh? Not being able to get visitors to buy work also. Walk in. People who just walk into the studio. So things just stop suddenly. Mukabi is one of hundreds of artists affected by the coronavirus pandemic. His monthly income has dropped by half to around $1,000 as a result of not being able to sell his art. At the Trust for Indigenous Culture and Health, the organization has launched an initiative to provide a platform for artists such as Mukabi to sell their works and promote COVID-19 health messages. The project has brought together 46 artists who created a mobile art installation in line with the theme. It was an opportunity for artists to kind of come together and collaboratively create something that kind of depicts uh, their presence and their continuity in what is out. Uh, it was also, I think, an opportunity to bring our work you know, I think in a very grand way into the public space. The art installation is expected to be on display for at least another month, spreading its message of hope while promoting works of the various artists involved. And in sports news, following Bayern Munich's victory in the Men's Champions League final, French football team Lyron took home the trophy in the Women's Champions League final in San Sebastian, Spain, beating Wolfsburg 3-1. Now, this was the team's fifth consecutive title, and talk about consistency. Where to go, ladies? In 1989, Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing showed a Brooklyn neighborhood living through racial tension and police brutality, inspiring a new generation of African-American filmmakers to tell their stories. Now he's putting a new spin on a 1996 music video with the lead. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. Thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Bungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on social media. We are on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe. Goodbye, everyone. Uh -huh.